Hello everyone, welcome back to Unrest. So, the story of Tanya, at least for now, has finished. So let's move on and see what's in store for us next. Ah, we're back to Asha, okay. You are Asha. You are supposed to be dead. Behemoth believes the royal family was killed by slum rioters, but Asha knows better. At Vijay's order, his confidant, the royal spy, uh, struck the blows that slew her parents. Shyam's mercenaries prevented the rest of the retinue from escaping. Asha was small and quick enough to escape into the slums. Her old allies, the people she trusted, Uncle Avinash, Kanika, vanished that night. She is alone. For a full year, she has been alone. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I was thinking her, I mean, her parents died, so... Wow. Wow, and that happened right after I played as her. And when I played as her, she was obviously quite young, and she still is. And she was, uh, what was her trait? Naive? Let's actually look at her traits. Well, I guess I'm not naive anymore, huh? But uh, I remember she hadn't, like, she pretty much never left the, the palace, right? She didn't know much of the outside world. God, a young girl not knowing much of the outside world, who's the heir to the throne, to have her f family killed, and then to be forced into the streets, oh my god. How has she stayed alive? Fugitive. No one can know who Asha is, or she'll meet the same fate as her parents. Starving. Asha can't remember the last time she had more than scraps to eat. So VJ. VJ was the one that ordered... ...the death of her parents. Is that at all connected to, um, what's his name? The, the guy who was kind of like demonstrating and stirring up discontent about the Naga and about the king and queen? I can't remember his name. Ranvir, I think it was. Is that at all related or are they completely separate? Hmm. Alright. Hey, girl, wake up. No good to sleep here anymore. Naga showed up. Look hungry. He moves to help you up. You know, I mean, I, I'm not afraid of the Naga, obviously. Like, in general, they're... <laughs> it's not like they're bloodthirsty people. Um, however, given the... The situation the Naga are in, in the slums... You know, pe people are a product of their environments. So, just because the Naga I've seen have been trustworthy and good... Doesn't mean that... The Naga in the slums are necessarily going to be. So maybe I should fear them. In fact, I think I should probably fear everybody in the slums. You know, it's kind of a... It's probably a place where you stab... Stab someone in the back to uh, step over their body. And reach food, basically. He wants to help me up? Hmm. Shit, for all I know, he's gonna steal something from me. As soon as he uh, gets his hands on me. I'm going to tell him to keep back. Don't touch me. You're shaking. You sick or just hungry? Hungry. No food. Three days. So you don't have anything? He scowls and instantly seems to forget you're standing there. Yep, I knew it. He wasn't interested in helping me. He wanted to steal from me. Alright, you little shit. Look at me. Look at how tall I stand over you. I could crush your head inside of my hands. The boy is nibbling a bit of hard bread. He gives you a dangerous look when he notices you're staring at him. Wow, he's not even afraid of me. Look at that. He's unconcerned. And disgusted and disdainful. Man, the music is good. All right, let's take a look around. Oh god, there's a corpse on the map? Ugh. Hmm. 
Okay, I already seen the traits. Let's see. I don't even have the quest. VJ. You watch VJ kill your parents, and from what you've heard, he's replaced them with a ruling council he heads. Okay, so it was a power grab. Yep, there's a Ranvir, a priest and counselor, the benefactor and voice of the slums, or at least the humans in the slums. Alright, let's look at the slums. Broken down streets, full of starving people with no food and little way to earn it honestly. Every family has a different way to float by, whether on Ranvir's handouts, food smuggled in by family members still working the land, low paid craft or labor, debt to money lending street gangs, or some combination of the above. There simply is not enough food to go around. Okay, well at least Ranvir, even if he is a bigot against the Naga, at least he's actually trying to help his people. Sometimes Ranvir comes out and gives a speech about compassion, unity, and how to overcome the Naga threat. Sometimes his men come to hand out bread and medicine. Either is better than lying in a gutter, starving. So the temple steps used to be uh, used to be crowded at all hours before Jadeep's men established their semi-permanent barrier. Wait a minute. Sometimes his men come to hand out bread and medicine. So they're the people that hand out medicine for free, right? Which when I was playing as Tanya, I, I sent that guy who had a sick son to the city to get free medicine. Hmm, I wonder if that storyline will come... Whoops, I just hit my mouse. <laughs> I wonder if that storyline will come back again. It's funny. Ranvir gives... Uh, I guess you could say sermons about the Naga threat. But the real threat is his own people. That's very ironic. And very sad. Okay, history of the slums. Hmm. They doubled in size over the past decade. Oh, Jesus. More and more people are ending up here, but the high mortality rates have nevertheless kept the population stable. Alright. Is this Vagrant blocking the way? Oh, shit. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Looks like you're not gonna starve today after all, kid. I have an opening in my gang with whatever your name is on it. Uh... Okay. Keep talking. You're gonna do my begging. I'll tell you where to go and how long to stay there. You bring me everything you get, and in return, I make sure you've always got enough to stay alive. You're not gonna be fat. I'll tell you that much right now. But you'll get a little bit of bread every day, whether you got lucky or not. Guaranteed survival, kid. Can't do better out here. That sounds promising. Yeah, but... Exactly what kind of begging? Every so often, High Priest Ranvir hands out bread by the temple gates. Every time, it's gone in two minutes. Your job is to go to the temple, curl up by the stairs looking pathetic, and wait however long it takes for the bread shipment to arrive. It might take a few days. I'll have people dropping by to make sure you don't starve. When the box comes out, you grab as many loaves as you can carry and bring them all back. You understand? Hmm. I... Is there any reason not to? Uh, how often are people going to check on me? Often enough, don't worry. I don't get any bread if you die, so I'll keep you in scraps. Like I said, you stick with me, you'll live. Now if you take the bread and run, I promise you I'll find you and kill you. You'll die a harder, crueler death for having bread than you ever would have had for want of it. Uh... D 
Did I agree to do it? Maybe I don't have to agree to it. I can just do it if I choose to. Do I have a new quest? No. Hmm. Alright. Saving my strength? One day, Ranvir might need it. So these people are ready to go at Ranvir's request. Like, it sounds like if Ranvir just tells them to do something, they'll do it. He has an army of a sort. Jeez, sick man, withered man. I need new skin? Oh my god, itching and burning, itching and burning. Jesus. You, girl. <coughs> Come closer. Hard to talk. Um... I... <laughs> I don't know if he's coughing because he's got something that could pass to me, or because of just something, you know, something else that wouldn't pass to me. You're sick. I'm not coming any closer. Please. Need medicine. No one to help me anymore. Jesus, I can search him for valuables. Don't Ranvir's men pass out cures by the temple? All gone. In hours. All gone. People fight. People kill. Only the healthier, strong enough to win. Please. Hmm. Okay, well, if the opportunity presents itself. I'll try my best. Yes, please. I've got food. Scrap of bread. Three days old. I'm not gonna take food from a sick man. The medicine will be a gift. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know... If this was many other games, like, there's a lot of games where you make hard decisions, right? Or ostensibly hard decisions like this. Do you give something to somebody as, you know, as a gift? Do you want payment? You see them in a lot of RPGs and stuff. Normally, what happens when you do the good thing, you know, there's, there's usually the goody two-shoes kind of answer. Where you can you just give stuff to people for free. But the thing is, typically, even if you don't ask for a reward, and you do the super nice thing of just gifting it to somebody, Typically, there is actually a reward, like, Oh, thank you for giving this to me. Now I'm going to give you this, like, this power-up, or this, this weapon I had as a gift. You know? So, ostensibly, it's a hard decision. But in the end, you just end up with getting, getting stuff anyway. So, normally, I would say, yeah, the medicine will be a gift. But this game isn't like that. At least, it hasn't been so far. So I'm trying to get myself to stop thinking in terms of, you know, what typically happens in a game and start thinking more in terms of, this is reality. I'm starving. So, no, it, it's not going to be a gift. Which means a handful of crumbs two weeks old. Better than nothing. We'll trade if I find anything for you. Bless you. Bless you. Well, if I'm going to be, uh out there anyway, waiting for bread, then the opportunity might very well present itself. Let's go take a look at the Naga cart. The Naga interloper has a unique name, so I'm assuming I can talk to you. There's nothing for you here, mouse. Scurry away. Why? You can't eat all that fruit. It'll just rot if you guard it all day. I can't, but my people can. This cart means fewer Naga starve to death tonight. You humans get gifts of bread from Ranvir. 
we get whatever we can beg or steal. You've got a snake on the council? Snake, that's a... That sounds like a racist word, right? That really sounds like a racist word to refer to them as. I don't know, though. I, I don't know the context on that. Hmm. Okay, well, it is the curious answer, apparently, so let's try it. You've got a snake on the council. Why don't you get her to pass out food packages? There is a balance. We kill one of J Deep's men, we all suffer. But if J Deep comes here to our street and butchers us, that our counselor wouldn't overlook. We know how to play the game. We know a safe victory when we see one. This is a safe victory. This will slide. I won't strike you, but I won't let you get closer either. Have the grace to retreat. In native tongue to other Naga. See if you can get this cart upright and take it over to the broken shack by the main road. My men will make sure you're not followed. Better to take an hour to get everything organized than let it turn into a feeding frenzy. I wonder if they know I can understand their language. Because she was studying the Naga language, right? Perhaps most don't. Hmm. Taking over to the broken shack. Can I talk to the... Oh. No, closer little mouse, I've warned you. Oh, right, 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 sorry. I wasn't actually getting closer to the cart, though. I was going... I was staying an equal distance and moving horizontally from it, but... Anyway... A bystander. Wish I knew what those bastards were hissing at each other. Could be anything, couldn't it? Okay, yeah, so most people can't understand them. I need to remain unknown. People can't know who I am. And if I tell them I can understand Naga, that's gonna be mighty suspicious. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. You know what I say? I say this is our city. If they wanted to be treated like they belong with us, maybe they shouldn't have locked themselves up in their warrens. Maybe they should be speaking our tongue, not theirs. Maybe if they didn't turn their nose up at human ways, we'd be happy to give them our food. That's what I think. Do you want to know what I think, bystander? I think you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> we basically forced this group of, uh, people into their own little places because we're bigots and uh, now I'm going to reinforce my bigotry by saying that they want to stay separate from us as they try to survive by being separate even though we force them to be separate because we're bigots yeah it, wonderful logic J Deep's man who is J Deep again? He used to lead one of the hundreds of street gangs, but something brought him and Ranvir together. Now Jadeep is the closest thing to a peacekeeper the slums have ever had, and his men enforce order with weapons and armor bought by the temple. Okay. So he's Ranvir's man. It's weird, these people aren't actually listed on the map as being talkable. And yet I'm pretty sure I can talk to J-Deep. Yeah. Hey, kid. Want to see a trick? Yeah, okay. Show me. He reaches behind your ear. When his hand returns, he's holding a scrap of bread, which he presses into your hand. Here. Now don't come back looking for more, because that's all I've got. Bread Magician? What? I'm not sure why it says Bread Magician up there, but holy crap, thank you very much. I like you a lot already. 
You are a very nice person. At least to me. What, what updated? Completed quests. Oh, the Naga's cart was a quest. I met a man who clearly had something against the Naga here. I didn't mention the cart of food. Alright, thank you. Let's see, can I actually eat it, or... Ear... <laughs> ear bread. <laughs> this bread either came from your ear or the sweaty pouch of one of Jadeep's slum militia. Either would explain the smell. But it's something. Ew. Between that and the fact that it's called ear bread, it really doesn't sound very... appetizing. It's not waxy by any chance, is it? Let's see if I can talk to these... youngins. What are they talking about? It has to be a boy? Are you stupid? Are they talking about me? Can I be Laxmi? Laxmi wasn't there. Oh, are they talking about, like, acting out something? Like playing a game? Can I be Asha? Um... No, Asha died later. You're the queen. Did she now? Tell me about how Asha died. And by the way, what did she look like? Alright, let's move on up. Preacher. Is that Ranveer? Talking about how horrible everything is. Yep. And bigoted crap. Okay. Can I talk to you? No, I can't. Blah, blah, blah. Taking our food. More bigoted crap. I'm just going to ignore them. There's nothing to be gained there. Whoa. Slum dweller. So, you gonna kill him? They catch me. Hmm. I'll listen in. Keep listening. For spitting on me? Nah. I broke his face, and that's enough. I don't even know where he lives. The longer I keep listening, the better the chance of me getting caught is. One more time? I think I see him around. You want me to give him a kicking next time? This doesn't sound important. I'm just gonna leave. Okay, can't go back there. Oh. For centuries, no Naga was allowed in Bohemra. Not since they betrayed us in war, in trade, in friendship, many years ago. But the royals broke that law. They led Naga, refugees from nearby settlements, into our slums. Move to interrupt. What the hell would be the point of that? Okay, let's keep listening, I guess. All this to make the Naga Empire want to trade with us, so that their merchants and nobles could eat Naga food from their gilded plates. Meanwhile, we get Naga diseases, Naga thugs, Naga eating more food than a family eats and taking it from our family's mouths. Then the royals came out into the slums to tell us how it was all a great plan, how it would heal Bohemra. All lies. Their lies killed hundreds of us. It's only fair we killed the three of them. Ranvir is the only one in this city who cares about us. So he gives us bread to strengthen us. He gives us medicine to heal us. He arms Jadeep's men to keep us safe from violence. Well, the city's dog, Shyam, keeps us caged. Who here can say their lives have not been touched by Ranvir's generosity? I am not going to challenge him. That's pointless and potentially very dangerous. 
Let's just leave. Ranvir protects. Through bread, medicine, and men, Ranvir protects. Corpse. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Corpse. Is that up here? But wait, they're just, they're discussing possibly like kicking somebody, but I don't see a corpse. Where's the corpse? Maybe it's up here in the center. Oh, it probably is up here. Oh, there it is. Onlookers. Gyrom. Who are you? You're not on the list. Hello, girl. My name is Gyrom. You haven't seen a man with pox scars all down the side of his face, a bald patch, and blackened fingernails, have you? Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe I have. But food first, or money. God damn it, that didn't work, did it? You know, you slum dwellers might not have things so bad if you just cooperate with each other a little bit. Okay? I've got this little scrap of bread. All I've got on me. Now you want to talk, or what? Oh, pff, I don't care if you hate me. I just care about the food. Yeah, he's over there. Was that so hard? Alright, take your little scrap of bread. You're lucky you look so pathetic. Have as much contempt for me as you want. I have bread. A few mouthfuls of fresh bread. If only witnessing misery in the slums always paid so well. Oh god. Okay, can anybody tell me what happened to this man? Found him like this this morning. You know him? No. I'm waiting to see if anyone claims him. Any friends, family, anyone like that. He has to have somebody. Most people do. Do you have anyone else? That's all I do have. It's been so long since I've had an ordinary morning. Out of everything, that's what I miss most. Ordinary mornings where I know what to do and there's no surprises like this one. Jeez. I just miss everything about the, li the way life used to be. She continues to stare at the body. She says nothing else and seems in no hurry to move on. Wait a minute, hold, hold on, what'd you say? You said something about medicine. Stupid priest out by the temple gave me some medicine. So I traded it in for some bread. Even with all the short even with all the shortages, Ranvir finds a way to put something in my stomach. Traded it in for some bread. Can I trade bread for medicine? Selling Naga liver makes you strong, makes you brave. Diseases can't touch you. Black market trader. He's selling Naga parts. And how did you get these Naga parts, huh? Hmm, can't talk to him. Oh, here we go. What do you need, kid? You got jewelry? Medicine? Naga liver, no questions asked. We've got bread baked this morning. No dirt, no sawdust. Just the real stuff. No thanks. I have a feeling I'm going to be coming back to him.
All right, let's go right. Jesus, there's another corpse. Philosopher. Child, listen to me. I know you can't read, but you can think, and that's all that's important. Tell me, what do you think of Ranvir's teaching? Teachings, rather. I'm not gonna tell him I can read. I do not want to give that away. I'm gonna say nothing. Let's see if he keeps talking. Wow, if you won't talk, I won't waste my time. Be gone. Okay, bye. Excuse me? Anyone wanna... You know his name? No? Go away. Okay. Desolate man. The skeletal man stares at the wall. He doesn't seem to notice you. What's wrong? He hugs his legs tighter to himself and continues staring at the wall. Seriously, you want to talk about it? There's nothing left to talk about. I'm done. You're still alive? What do you mean you're done? I'm no good to anyone. And not anymore. There isn't much food left. Every day I eat means someone else doesn't. Maybe someone else's kids. Maybe someone else's wife. I can't do this anymore. That's the way it feels, huh? I don't deserve anything. I might as well just die. Then maybe nobody does. We keep trying anyway. The man lets out a deep breath. From now on, he seems to ignore you. I don't think I helped him at all. Alright, is Ranveer up there? No, but there's J-Deep. Priest Prabble. You. Are you sick? You look sick. Here, take this medicine. Take it. Uh, wow, he, he's just going to give it to me? I could tell him that it's not for me, it's for someone else, but what's the point? The only thing that might do is just make him not give it to me. Okay, I'll take it. He lets out a long sigh of relief. All done. All done until tomorrow. Wow, he really didn't want to be here, I guess. Hmm, I don't think they're going to allow me to talk to J-Deep. Fruit cart... Fruit cart turned over. Hold on. Yeah, fruit cart turned over, Naga were on it. Like, it's too damn fast! Actually, hold on. That, that's an option. Uh, pop up tech speed slow. Actually, I probably need to save it. Save. There we go. Now, <clears throat> what did you say? Fruit cart turned over. Naga were on it, just like that. And where's the driver? Missing. Almost like he was swallowed up. Can the Naga actually do that? Can they actually swallow people? 
think you could fit a, a whole person inside of a naga. But then again, you can fit some pretty big stuff inside of a snake. Alright, they're probably gonna stop me. There we go. Hold up. Where are you going, kid? Nowhere. I'm just going. Don't play around with me. This is the way to the temple. We've got no food or medicine today. So find somewhere else to beg for scraps. Will you get more food soon? Great, he hates me even more. Go find food somewhere else. You think we want more starving children on the temple steps? We can't go near the building without stepping over ten of you. Alright, that'll do. Here, girl. I've got a scrap of bread. You look like you're starving. Wow, I can tell him to keep it. No. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna take it. That's it. Eat it up. You know who I am? I'm Jadeep. And these are my men. They may not be the most kind and understanding, but they've probably already saved your life. Without us, the Naga would have already taken over everything they wanted and left the humans to starve and rot. I've got an entire loaf of bread here, and I'll give it to you if you promise me one thing. If you ever see anyone who wants to tear down our order, anyone who attacks my men, or Ranvir's priests, or the council's guards, you come to me and tell me everything. Promise me that, and the loaf is yours. That's smart. That's very smart what he's doing. He's basically buying an informant for the price of a single loaf of bread. That's very, very smart. Hmm. I mean, hell, even if I don't actually tell him, I've got the loaf of bread, so... I I'm curious, though. Why would someone want to work against you? Let's see what he thinks. That's a good question. There's two kinds of anarchists. There are renegade sects who don't like that the High Priest of Baka Mundi is on the council instead of one of their own priests. And then there's Naga, who aren't content with the representation their Naga counselor already gives them, and wants to rule by strength alone. Lately, a priestess named Kanika has been uniting the two of them. If anyone you know lost a home to fire recently, she's probably behind it. You'd think things were bad enough already. Fair enough. I'll keep an eye out. That's what I like to hear. We're in this together, you know. Now run along. If anyone bothers you, let my men know about it. Jadeep actually seems like a pretty good guy. Oh. Avanash. Uh, holy crap. Uh, hold on, before that though. Yeah, Jadeep seems like a pretty cool guy. Uh, very nice. But he's probably a bigot. Just like everybody around Ranvir seems to be. Including Ranvir himself, of course. But uh, at least he's actually doing something good. Asha, I found you. The nightmare is over, for I finally found you. You escaped? How? Luck. The day we were all to die, one of my personal guards confessed Vijay had bribed him to end my life. I was too late to help any of you, and I knew that once his coup was completed, Vijay would kill me the moment I surfaced. I was sure you were dead. I've spent twelve months searching for you. Twelve months of suffering Vijay's futile leadership. That thug Shyam's iron grip on the slums. Ranvir and his gutless, fanatical cronies. Twelve months of waiting for a day we could make things better. And now the day has come. Okay, what are we gonna do? What exactly is your plan? Follow me, and I will show you what I have built. Know that before too long, this city will ring out with your name. 
Behemra will rise you up on its shoulders and rend Vijay's false reign asunder. Huh. You don't know where Avanash has been or what he's planning. However, you have a feeling tomorrow is going to be very different from today. Yeah, what the hell does he have in store? Did I gain a trait? Adaptable. Asha is willing to compromise if it serves her interests. Absolutely. Alright, let's see what's next. Let's see. I was trying to figure out how to pronounce his name. I guess it's not that hard. It's probably just Bogwan. Alright. You are Bogwan, priest and father. 38 years old. Bhagwan is an initiate to Bank initiate to Banka Mundi's temple. That is to say, Ranvir's temple. Hailed as the voice of the poor, Ranvir is one of the most powerful and popular figures in Bahimra. So much so that Vijay offered him a seat at his council. With the help of Jadeep, a local militia captain, his believers provide food, medicine, and order to the parts of the city ignored by the nobles. Bhagwan has been a priest all his life. And while he has heard that serving Ranvir is a different and dangerous undertaking, all he knows is that it will feed and clothe his children. So far, that has been all he has needed to know. Alright, so Priest Father just looking out for uh, him and his children. Priest. Priest cast. He's studded. He's, he's studded. He's studded. He's studied priestly ways his entire life, and Ranvir's temple is not the first he has belonged to. Bogwan has two children. If he does not work, they do not eat. High Priest Ranvir. Oh, here's Ranvir. Okay. So, let's see. He's accepting. Um, he's critical of me, but he's not fearful. Okay, so pretty good standing with him. Your initiation has begun, Bogwan. What you say now carries from my ears to the ears of Banka Mundi. Speak from your heart. Hide nothing, for you stand in the presence of something far greater than yourself. Silence. Should I be silent? No, probably not. Speak from your heart. Speak from your heart. Speak from your heart, so should I be relaxed? This is listed as relaxed, I will speak honestly. Wouldn't that be speaking from your heart, you know, not thinking about it too much? Okay. I will speak honestly. You wish to be my priest, but that doesn't tell me much. Tell me, Bogwan, what is the first duty of a priest? I don't know. The first duty. Um... I think it's one of the first two. I think it's the first one. Is a priest mainly supposed to serve or to teach? I don't actually know. To serve the cause of my god and my order. So you would be a soldier in Banka Mundi's army. We can always use more of them. We're fighting a war for the city's spirit, and it's far from over. But this is not the first standard you've marched under, is it? You are priest caste, and you are not young. Okay, I could, I could just admit that I'm basically just doing this for, you know, for the, the money for the food. But... I don't think he would like that. He wants passionate men, right? He wants men of faith, men that serve. To be honest, though, to a certain degree, let's be honest. Your temple erased my order months ago. Yours would seem to be the higher cause. 
Tell me, do you wish to be more than a humble priest? My hierarchy is vast. For a man of strength and wisdom, there is much divine work to be done. Do I wish to be more than a humble priest? Well, the more I can do, the more I can support my kids. Yes, I would. I take every opportunity to do the most I can. We will see. I have one final question. You know that when I stood where you stood, this was one small temple on a street full of them. Banka Mundi told me that this was unacceptable. She told me there is a time and place for every message, for every course of action, and that it was long past time the principles of compassion and protection reigned in these streets. I am he who heard her word and made it manifest. I know in my heart that my voice, the voice of compassion, is all that keeps these slums from boiling over. Speak honestly. If Banka Mundi appeared to you and told you to kill me, would you do it? I serve my order. I serve my god. Yes, I would. A fair answer. From now until Banka Mundi sees otherwise, you are a servant of the city. Time to set aside your layman's duties and begin doing real priest work, yes? Go on. Ask Daya what needs doing. I'll be watching you with interest. Oh, look at how many arms this dude has. Can you imagine how useful someone with like 10 arms would be in the kitchen? I'm just saying, that'd be damn useful. You could stir like five pots and then like chop vegetables with a couple others. Man, that'd be amazing. Anyway, uh, okay, Daya. You are initiated? Good. We'll talk things over later, but now I need someone to go outside and pass out bread in Priya's place. This has not been a good morning. For her or us? Priya said she saw some Naga had snuck in by the east wall, so stay away from them. Naga don't get bread rations. Now go. This is a beautiful temple, isn't it? This place is gorgeous. Prabble, that's the guy who was handing out, uh, handed out medicine to Asha. Is he just sleeping or is he sick? Before that, though, let's take a look around. Okay. Hungry crowd. Here's the temple. What's this button do? Oh, I can move it. Travel. He usually passes out medicine. He's about your age and in worse health. Maybe that's why he was relieved to finish with the day. You know, finish passing out medicine. Because he was, he was sick. Also, I just had a thought. I, I didn't get to complete Asha's... her day. Does that mean I've lost the opportunity to give the medicine to the sick man? No, there's no way, right? That'd be incredibly silly. Teachings. Do not take from another. Do not harm another. Protect others from harm. Your fellow priests used to gossip about how quickly the Temple of Banka Mundi was gathering followers, both laymen and other members of the priest caste. But no one was prepared for the mass exodus of priests from your own order and others towards the temple of Banka Mundi. You'd never heard of anything like this happening in Behemra's theological history before. 
Seemingly overnight, Ranvir's word became one of the only words in the city. Strange. How you doing, Brabble? No, please, no. Oh, God. Not in the slums, please. Sounds like he's having a nightmare. Priya. There's always too many of them. And they're all starving. And if I don't feed some of them, they'll die. And they... They say things. Terrible things. I'm sorry, Bogwan. I always pass out bread, and today I just... I couldn't do it. I understand. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Oh, you'll see. Priest Samit. Those bastards. Those sick, murderous bastards. Did you hear what they did to Prabble? Wait, what happened? Bogwan, he's barely breathing. Prabble went out to speak in the slums, and some people thought he was carrying our medicine, and they cornered him, and they nearly killed him. We're trying to help those people, and they come at us like hungry animals. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I'm not really sure what to say to that. I, I don't know what to say. Worthless, ungrateful bastards. I hope the Naga eat them all. I hope the whole slum burns to the ground. Jesus. Uh, Samit, I would like to point you to the teachings of Baka Mundi that say, Do not harm another and protect others from harm. Uh, you might want to read over that section. Paragraph 3, section 2J. Look it over. Temple Patron. Hmm. Alright, it's about time to go hand out bread, but first, let's talk to Priestess Chatura. Never mind, I can't. Oh, okay. You can, it's just triggered automatically. A word to the wise, Bogwan. Don't give anything to the children. They're all members of street gangs, and most of anything you give them is going to end up on the black market. God, don't give anything to children, the uh, people that pretty much need it the most. That is depressing. Okay. What if I make them eat the bread on the spot? The condition they're in? Chances are you make them eat that much bread at once, they'll sick it back up or die. Hmm. Maybe. Trust me, we've tried a lot of systems. Handing out only a little bit of bread to each person and having them all starve to death. Making people eat it on the spot in front of all the other hungry, desperate people. Taking them away from the group to feast and watching them get targeted later on. Nothing really works. But this is the system that doesn't work the least. It feels like it should be easier than this, doesn't it? Yeah. Alright, it's time to go hand out bread, but before that, I think I'm going to end this episode here. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I will continue the story of Bogwan.